Hello everyone, welcome to Study IQIS English channel. My name is Shubham Sagar. Today we have to talk about connection between Madhav National Park and Satkoshia Reserve. So what I have done here is I have taken two Hindu articles and I have clubbed them together in this particular video so that we can cover, you know, ek teer se do nishane, something like that we say that with one particular stroke we are trying to cover two different articles and we'll try to establish a connection between them as well so march 10 2025 hindu page number one we have this particular article same day same paper page number four we have another article and we'll talk both of like about both of them and we'll also try to establish a connection and once we are done with establishing a connection then we'll take one question you will solve that question and you will post the answer of that question in the comment section. So, Madhav National Park in Madhya Pradesh becomes India's 58th Tiger Reserve. So, now the question arises that, sir, do we have to remember all 57, or the previous 57 Tiger Reserve? The answer is no. But have a look at all these Tiger Reserve, the latest one, let's say, the Tiger Reserve which has been added from 2022 onwards, those Tiger Reserves become important. Plus, what else is important? Madhav National Park, Madhya Pradesh. So, when you are seeing this particular article, question should come in your mind. Which state has maximum number of tiger reserve? Which state has maximum number of national park? Which state has maximum number of wildlife sanctuary? Other question which can come in your mind and which should come in your mind rather is what is the basic difference between national park, wildlife sanctuary, biosphere reserve as well as tiger reserve? So these are some questions which we'll try to answer and then we'll go into the another article, you know, which will talk about Satkoshia reserve. So Madhav tiger reserve in Madhya Pradesh has been declared India's 58th Tiger Reserve. So where it is? Madhya Pradesh. And again, announcement has been made. It is 9th Tiger Reserve in Madhya Pradesh. All these information are there. Where it is located? In the Chambal region. All these facts are important. Why it is important? Because this particular article and the next article also deals with environment. And we know if you're preparing from UPSC perspective, how much UPSC love environment, you know. IAS and IFS, Forest Service, they have the same prelims. So these informations, they are very important from UPSC perspective. Also, if you are preparing for some other exams, you cannot, you know, not look at this particular article and the next article. So now these are three questions in front of you. And if you know the answer of these questions, you can post it in the comment section, sir and ma'am. So the question here is, state with maximum tiger reserve, which is that state? Is it Madhya Pradesh only or some other state? State with maximum national park, which state is it? Is it Madhya Pradesh only or some other state? State with maximum wildlife century, which state it is? Is it Maharashtra or some other state? And what about Andaman and Nicobar Island? Is it a, like, what about their wildlife century status? Again, if you know the answer of these questions and what I'm asking, you can post it in the comment section. These are very, very, very important questions. You know, we cannot, like whenever you're reading these kind of articles, these are the questions which should come in your mind first and foremost. And then the second part, and in fact, uh, this part is also very important from the basic conceptual understanding point of view. What differentiate national park from wildlife century from, you know, Biosphere Reserve and Tiger Reserve. So let's take them one by one. National parks, so it preserves both flora and fauna. They are, you know, created to preserve both flora and fauna. Very high restrictions are there in uh, national parks. You have core buffer transition zone in almost like, you know, national park also, wildlife century also, Biosphere Reserve also. Core buffer and transition zone. And you can like look more into it but I'm just telling you the basic difference if you know some more difference between National Park, Wildlife Century, Tiger Reserve and Biosphere Reserve you can post it in the comment section so you, it protects we are talking about National Park here it protects flora and fauna it there is so much restrictions there you know and uh, and you will understand what I'm saying here when we compare it to the wildlife century and then there are other restrictions as well other attributes associated with National Park as well so if we do a comparative analysis with wildlife century so they are generally for faunal protection you know animals etc specifically to faunal protection more concerned about fauna rather than flora you know there are lesser restrictions that means in certain regions, agriculture can be allowed, some people can live and they can take some, uh, some forest dwellers can live and all these things can happen. So lesser amount of restrictions compared to national park. And then you can give me the answer in the comment section. National parks are notified by whom? Central government or state government? Wildlife centuries are notifi notified by whom? Central government or state government? So these are the questions which we have to as I keep on saying, ponder upon. Okay, so basic differences. Now, if you talk about biosphere reserves, so man and biosphere program of UNESCO, it is like done and under that, you have to find out how many biosphere reserves are there. So in biosphere reserve, when you see biosphere reserve, you'll realize that a biosphere reserve may 
be made up of multiple national park or multiple wildlife sanctuaries or a permutation and combination of both. So what I'm trying to say here is a one particular biosphere reserve can have two national parks, three wildlife sanctuaries or let's say three wildlife sanctuaries of three national parks, something like this. So it's a permutation and combination of national park and wildlife sanctuary biosphere reserve. But if you generally see and it's that is the basic difference between national park and wildlife century and what is biosphere reserve permutation and combination of national park and wildlife century if you know some more difference you can write it in the comment section then you have tiger reserve which can be national park which can be wildlife century but they are as you can see here majorly focused on preservation or conservation of tiger so that's why we were reading about madhav national park becoming a tiger reserve so hope some of your concepts you, you are getting some of these concepts and again if you know more differences more the merrier as we say because these kind of questions can be asked in pre as well as main sir so again current tiger pro pro population <laughs> population in the madhav national park and now madhav tiger reserve so you have around five tigers including two cubs and tiger and here we are talking about the tiger reintroduction project three tigers were introduced blah 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 you can have a look at this please understand the most important part here was madhav national park became a tiger reserve in which state it is located which tiger reserve it is 58 tiger reserve which state has highest number of tiger reserves you know maximum number of tiger reserve national park wildlife century and then the basic difference between these national park wildlife centuries biosphere reserve and tiger reserves so location and geography again just a brief gist of madhav national park madhya pradesh chambal region and you can have a look at all these numbers originally the hunting ground now this is very important sindhya rulers of gwalior marathas and named after maharaja maharaja again <laughs> madhav rao sindhya sir and very very prominent figure jyoti raditya sindhya sir is associated with him so and it was declared a national park in 1959 and now in 2025, it has been declared a tiger reserve. Flora and fauna, these are, these are the flora which you can find, find there. Teak, salt, tendu and the oak trees. Again, these are some factual information. You pay stay in pre. They will give you these information. One, two, three statements. So, so you have to, you know, have a look at these small, small facts. Birds, painted stoke and white bees along with other mammals which you can see here. Now, let's move on to the next article of the day in this you know, March 10, 25, 2025, Hindu page number four. So here we are talking about Satkoshia Tiger Reserve. It's a very unique tiger reserve. It's a tiger reserve which currently has no tiger at all. And then the government is saying that, no, no, we want to reintroduce tiger. So we will be displacing people. People are like, bro, we don't have any tiger. Without any reason, you have already displaced people earlier. And now you're again displacing people. What is this? At least bring some tigers here. State government is like, bro, if we bring some tigers and they eat you, and you, you may have read a book called Man Eaters from Kumayu, then what will happen to you? Again, these are all imaginary discussions, which may or may not have happened between state government and the people. But hope you're understanding what is happening. This is a very, very unique tiger reserve with due respect to Satkoshia Tiger Reserve. It's a tiger reserve which currently has no tigers at all. But since it is in news, we have to read about it. And now, see, earlier also, they brought some tigers from other you know, National Park, like Kana National Park, if I'm not wrong, and they died. And government has still not given up. No, 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 we want to bring it. There is no clear cut definition why tigers, which are translocated from other region, they are dying in Satkoshia Tiger Reserve. But state government is like, we will not give up, bro. We'll bring more tigers. So that's what this news is all about. Over 112 families from Tuluka, and again, you can have a look at this, were relocated. And why this relocation is going on? Because government is saying, we will bring more tigers. So this is part of the Odisha government's plan to create an inviolate, a sacred region for tigers in Satkoshia Tiger Reserve. And again, you can have a look at this. How many fam families have been relocated? located earlier there were tigers but they died and now you know around from 2022 20, 23 onwards we don't have any tiger in satkoshia and maybe odisha government is like how come we want tiger and we will have it so again i i I'm keep i keep on telling you about man eaters from kumao by jim corbett which the book which i'm currently reading once you read that book you will realize you know what are the basic differences between tigers and leopards not all tigers are man eaters but once they become man eaters it doesn't matter to them whether it is day or night they will hunt anywhere and everywhere unlike leopards which do hunt us but they hunt in the night because they are terrified of us more or less but tigers they lose fear of us once they become man eaters so again it's it's a very interesting book man eaters of kumayu by jim corbett you can have a look at it it's a collection of stories where he has hunted different 
man eating tigers and it's it's an awesome book again let's come back to the topic absence of tigers in satkoshia this is what we are talking about satkoshia tiger reserve unique tiger reserve in our country with no tigers so str established and again bol bachchan is given here facts are given here by 2018 2019 only one tiger remain and 2022 census confirmed that dude we don't have any tiger in this tiger reserve the reason for disappearance we don't know and you know environmental is still speculating what is happening you know whether this particular habitat is not suitable for tiger relocation or what so there are so many debates and questions and cross questioning is going on flaws in resettlement planning relocated villages they are like dude you are giving us 10 15 lakhs and when you are mean you know resettling us relocating us we are losing our livelihood options and all these things so all these issues are being talked about in this particular slide the settlement lacks adequate housing roads and even a cremation ground and people in that particular region they are not very happy with what odisha government is doing with due respect to you know whatever is happening again if you are from odisha if you are from nearby this particular region you can shed more light on what is going on here why satkoshia tiger reserve has become a tiger reserve with no tigers you know so legal and activist opposition to forced relocation bro you are relocating you don't even have any any tiger right now so again this has become a matter which sometimes people are like exactly what is happening activists and lawyers are arguing that relocation violates fra 2006 we have talked about fra earlier also there was a tn godavarman case on which i have made a video you can have a look at that case as well 40 petitions have been filed filed in odisha high court rather and state hsrs again human right commission if you read about national human rights commission and state human rights commission you will realize that some people call them toothless tiger they are told to do things but they have not been given enough power so again if you are filing petitions to them you have to keep in mind this particular scenario of state human rights commission along with nhrc with due respect to all of them so the government must legally prove that humans and wildlife cannot coexist before displacement and that is one point which people are saying that you are relocating us we can coexist with tigers you know not all tigers are man eaters this i can confirm from that particular book but once they become and there was a very interesting uh, you know analog in fallacy or whatever you want to call it in that book that sometimes they will lose their teeth sometimes the tigers will lose their hunting capability the normal hunting capability where they are eating you know cheetah and all those people and then they will start eating men once they are you know in cap uh, you can you can say that they have lost a limb they have lost some teeth or something like that has happened to tigers then they resort to eating men and they you know lose fear of men so again it's not like very rarely tigers will become man eater and that's why people are saying that we can coexist and if they become man eater then that's a different issue altogether so we will resort to that not all tigers are man eaters so concern over government's intention and many people are saying that bro your intention is promoting tourism you want to displace tribal people you want to displace forest trap dwellers there is something else going on there tiger relocation is just an excuse you want to promote tourism and other things there and that's why you want us gone so many suspect that relocations are motivated by tourism rather than conservation and development projects such as highway and bridges you know these are also known as linear intrusion projects So when you are making all these, you know, highways and bridges, how come it will promote tiger conservation in that region, bro? These are linear intrusion projects that will impact the movement of these tigers in these regions. So contradict the idea of making the area people free for tigers. You will, you are saying that you want to relocate us. You will make this region people free, and then you are constructing highways and bridges. Wow, what an irony! So who will move on these highways and bridges? Only tigers, two, three tigers, whom you are, you know, relocating from some other region. What is the purpose of these highways and bridges when there will be no? and there questions to be asked some villagers allege the forest department forced their signatures on relocation agreement so what you are trying to understand here the other argument what happens when you force people to relocate to other region and what other you know political motives and all those things can be involved here so satkoshia tiger reserve a very unique tiger reserve located in odisha do remember these madhav national park satkoshia reserve spanning four district you can have a look at this and this 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 is the part which is important satkoshia so, gauss century and basi pali wildlife century my dear friend if i am pronouncing this word wrong pardon me by merging them satkoshia tiger reserve was created up until you know 2019 2020 2021 they had some tigers but now zero so converse again you can have a look at i'm not reading all these data this is your work and 
Mahanadi river flows through it. This is important. UPSC loves to ask these questions like, you know, Ajanta Caves lies on which river and all those. If you know it, near which river Ajanta Caves lie, you can post it in the comment section. So Mahanadi river, they can give you. Passes through or flows through Satkoshia river. Uh, or they can change the name of Mahad Mahan Mahanadi river rather and they can give you Godavari river. So you have to be very mindful about it. Declared a Ramsar site. Ramsar is in Iran. Now comes the question and that's how you have to also read these articles. How many Ramsar sites we have currently in India? If you know it, post it in the comment section. So many questions, you know, comes or emerges from these two articles what we have seen up until now. Cool, sir. Now, this is a question in front of you based on the two articles which we have done plus so many questions I have asked. If you know any of them or if you know most of them or if you know all of them, you can post it in the comment section. Consider the following statements regarding Madhav National Park. Three statements. How many you think are correct? All of them. One or two, two, three, one, three. You can post it in the comment section. So what is the connection between Madhav National Park and Satkosha Reserve? The connection is tiger and anyway it's an excuse for me to make you people you know go to that those two articles and to have a look at those two articles those two articles important these national park these tiger reserves are important sometimes we are like oh my god there's so many national parks so many tiger reserve how can we remember all of them you don't have to just keep a tab on the last one year two year national park tiger reserve which are in news those, those are important like kuno national park we have i have done a one video earlier so that is important madhav now national park is important satkoshia tiger reserve plus the basic differences between them plus the questions which we have asked earlier so do revise them and if you want me to share this pdf along with the answer of that objective question and you can post your answer in the comment section you can join my Telegram channel fun study with show because study should be fun. Plus, our March batch has started and the admissions are closing on 15th March 2025. Prices are starting from for, for this particular batch starting from 999. You can use this code SHS Live, which you're also seeing in the bottom section for maximum discount. And all these are the features of our March batch. Prelims and means residential program, full refund on clearing prelims. I love this particular feature. I keep on talking about it. 11,000 reward to monthly top performer interview guidance program because this is P2I. Prelims to interview. Tikashe. Awesome. So that's it from my side. Please do revise these articles. Please try to answer the questions which I have asked in the comment section. Plus, if you have any more, you know, views on these two articles, you want to add something about Satkosha Tiger Reserve, its peculiar nature, Madhav National Park, you can post it in the comment section. So that's it from me. Take care. Be blessed. Tata. Bye-bye.